chiller for a bit. So this is um, from Acting the Angular, how transferable skills have helped me become a better software developer. Um, well, but yeah, that's the title, obviously. I'll, I'll go into it a bit more as we're going on. So who am I? Um, most of them, most people here are also people, so you already know who I am. Uh, so I'm a 20-year-old, uh, 21-year-old developer from Belfast, uh, working at also funny enough. Uh, so I started off as a placement student, uh, part-time. I was doing a foundation degree in Belfast Met. So yeah, I was working with also uh, part-time, then went into full-time placement, and then from full-time placement went into full-time employment. Um, so the technologies I would kind of work with on a, on a daily basis would be JavaScript um, and Angular, obviously, off the back of that. Um, Azure, particularly with uh, Logic Apps. Um, VS sort of code is sort of what we're kind of moving towards now, uh, especially as we're going into like, a lot of Angular kind of web uh, development. I can't carry on. And uh, we've got Zapier as well at the end there. So uh, similar way. Um, that I would work with uh, Azure, only with uh, different products like Twilio and uh, Salesforce and all that. So, overview and sort of the key messages about today. Uh, so, I'll talk about my main hobbies, uh, kind of what I do outside of work, uh, the skills I've developed through them, and tapping into those skills in order to build better software. So, uh, these are my cornerstone hobbies. There's, uh, there's three main ones. So, we've got music. We've got languages and we've got uh, theatre, sort of acting, all that kind of stuff. Now you probably see similarities between them anyway. They're all quite sort of what people would say are, I guess, right side brain kind of things. Um, particularly with music and languages, people say there's, there's a correlation with them. But, um, so, there's a lovely little photo of me when I'm like 10. <laughs> Throw that in with the hair and all, that's great. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm self-taught in pretty much everything that I, I do musically, uh, except for the, the stuff that I done in like grade exams and stuff in. Um, began sort of self-teaching myself when I was about 11 uh, in, the, in drums and ukulele, of all things. Uh, and that obviously led, led me on to do other things. Uh, yeah, I was very... I was pretty bored, like there's nothing really much to do. <laughs> So I just, yeah, basically just picked up. I've come from a quite a musical family, so it kind of makes sense. So here's the kind of, just to give you a bit of a, kind of an idea, like musically, like how, I guess, how much that takes up of my time, other than sort of listening to it all the time. So uh, the ones on the left-hand side are things that I would do regularly now on like a daily basis, and things on the right are things that uh, maybe I was, I would have took during uh, school, or basically I just don't really, play as much of them anymore. Um, of course, all of these have been, these are all instruments that have had uh, sort of practical applications, so like I've actually done performances of some sort uh, with them all. Uh, yeah. So, languages, here's my the second one. Uh, English, obviously, I speak, uh, I'd like to hope that uh, you know that I speak English. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Castilian, Spanish, and uh, British Sign Language are uh, the other two. So uh, I've done Spanish for A level. I also done music and uh, computing for A level, uh, just for more context. But yeah, so I, I sort of kept Spanish on uh, after A level. Uh, so that kind of proficiency, so it's like B2, sort of C1, if, if anybody knows uh, anything about that, that's kind of the gist. Uh, British Sign Language, uh, I know very, very little. Like I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but I, I, I'd sort of get by on sort of conversing with somebody. Uh, just about though. And I have a very basic understanding of Portuguese and Dutch. Uh, Portuguese obviously off the back of the Spanish and Dutch uh, just because why not really. <laughs> uh, so the theatre. Um, so predominantly a lot of music theatre, kind of pantomimes, uh, some short film and uh, there was a murder mystery as well we done in school. Uh, so that would be kind of the main things that I would uh, doing kind of that aspect. So there's me, a couple of months ago. I don't know if you can see that, it's a little bit dark. Uh, there's me again, uh, on the right. <laughs> um, that's me in the middle. Uh, notice like the, the packed out belly and stuff. Um, I think it's, I'd like to say that uh, a lot of those roles were um, quite normal and quite conventional. But I'd like to say that. I'd like to say that. <laughs> I'd like to say that, <laughs> but uh, 
Uh, that happened. Uh, <laughs> that was um, that was a pantomime uh, about three or so years ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> so now we have a little bit of context about what I do uh, in my spare time. Uh, let's sort of tie this in a wee bit more. So some easily identifiable links you might be able to sort of pick up on already um, between the two. Uh, the idea of being able to express an idea through different mediums. So you know, say, the emotion of sadness, you could say, I am sad, or I am happy. But in uh, music, you can express that through playing certain chords, or playing in a certain key, or whatever. Um, and then obviously acting as you're physically doing that. <laughs> uh, getting creative using set rules and logic. Uh, this is kind of a big one. Uh, there was a, in the previous talk, um, Girl Victoria was sort of going on about the fact that there's uh, that sort of right-sided or left-sided predominancy in some people is is a myth, and I, I would completely agree with that. The fact that you know you're very logical doesn't ha doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be creative, and, and vice versa. Um, you look at the likes of you know programming languages, for example. Uh, depending on obviously you know there's somewhat of a limited creativity, but there's still a lot of creativity there based on you know what kind of building blocks you're going to use, how you're going to use them, uh, how efficient that's going to be. Uh, same thing with language. Obviously, I'm talking in a certain way. Um, I'm using certain tenses. I'm uh, using certain vocabulary. And uh, being able to work well in a, in a team or group. Um, obviously, music, you think of bands and uh, with theatre, you, you're sort of thinking of a company or a cast. Uh, and then, obviously, in a, in a development uh, perspective, you're thinking of uh, development teams. And uh, being able to engage in customers and coworkers with interpersonal skills. So, uh, in terms of that's more of a specifically uh, <clears throat> like a theatre based kind of thing. The fact that you're able to present yourself in a certain way, you want to be able to convey something to somebody, uh, keep them engaged, obviously, which I hope is the case here. Um, so um, now we've kind of got those sort of easily identifiable ones. I want to be able to maybe to drill down into some of these. So uh, <clears throat> one is putting concepts into practice correctly. So we've got uh, you know, the fact that you know a certain musical skill or you know how to write a for loop is all well and good, but it's the, it's the idea of being able to know how and when to use them. So you know, maybe not just a for, but a for each or a, or a while loop or something. Um, same thing with music, like it's all well and good if you know how to do, if you play a, a D mixolydian scale or something, but like, you know, what sort of practice is that if you're not, you know, if you're not gonna be in that uh, scenario? Let's a little. That's the start of the memes. The memes are coming now. Like. Uh, <laughs> so the second one is uh, learning uh, slash working with context and uh, learning sounding components. So with, um, with this, this sort of came to me last night at about one in the morning. I was like, oh yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> so I've sort of the fact that you're learning from a, if you're learning from a phrase book, say if you're going to Spain or Portugal or, or any other country, um, if you're learning from a phrase book, it's very much like learning uh, API documentation and the fact that, you know, say, you want to know where the bank is or something in Spain. Um, you sort of look it up. Okay, like, donde está el banco? Where is the bank? Um, learn from API documentation. Right, how do I get? How do I get that bottle? Oh yeah, it's get bottle. Or you say, um, donde está el banco? Fair enough. But the thing you have to prepare yourself for after that is, if that person's a native Spanish speaker they're going to tell you the directions in Spanish. And if you don't learn what left and right and up and down and then and out and all that sort of thing is in Spanish, you're not going to have any sort of clarity on where a bank is. So if I were to say, I don't know, get bottle for an API sort of example. So get bottle. See what I mean? <laughs> you need to be able to know how to you know, take the water out of the bottle, pour it into the glass, all that kind of carry on. <clears throat> That's a Duolingo. If anybody doesn't know what that is, it's a, like a language learning app. Um, so never assume requirements either. So you have to be able to dig deeper. So uh, again, a lot of this stuff Spanish because that's probably the most thing I'm proficient in language-wise. Uh, so falso, false. Makes sense. Incredibly similar. There's just a one-letter difference. Uh, verduras and vegetables. Uh, verduras comes from verde, which is green. So you think greens, vegetables, that kind of carry on. Makes sense, but you know, you have to sort of dig a wee bit deeper. Uh, embarazada. Sounds a bit like embarrassed. 
but it actually means pregnant. So you think, okay, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's happened a few times, and uh, I remember in uh, in Spanish class in school, like a lot of people say, oh, oh, estoy embarazada. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> and of course, that works the other way. So, um, say um, you're congested, you have like a stuffy nose, you have a bit of a cold. Um, if you were to hear somebody say that in Spanish, you'd sort of be saying, you know, constipado. If somebody says, estoy constipado to you, you're probably thinking, why are you telling me that? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So, um, very quick, very nice and easy. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, far away. No? Lovely. Oh, hello. Yes, hello, yes. Yeah, sure. Organize, like, yeah, sure. So um, the fact that um, I think a big thing for me was uh, whenever I was in Belfast Met, uh, a lot of the stuff we done was all sort of Java, and then our uh, web modules were all C sharp, sort of dot net based. Uh, from that to going into sort of a predominantly JavaScript kind of role, um, fair enough, relatively similar, but you sort of had to look at things slightly differently, and even then. Uh, been able to apply knowledge to the products and stuff that we use and work. Uh, you know, similar concepts but differently and you sort of have to change your way of thinking. It's the same thing with languages. Um, I think a big thing as well, the fact that uh, there was a big, language, or there was a big uh, learning shift between when I was still in school learning Spanish or playing music and whenever I left school. Now, music was okay but in terms of Spanish I completely relied on class time. Uh, and obviously homework and all that, but when it came to taking it upon myself, uh, that was more of a, <clears throat> the fact that I was able to do that helped me learn how I learn and that sort of way. So it's the same thing with uh, being able to adapt to different programming languages, being able to adapt to different uh, spoken languages as well. That makes any clarity? Thank you. <laughs> Great. Lovely. Anybody else? Yes. Uh-huh. When that when you're relating that back to APIs, yeah. do you do you feel then understanding a little bit of the front end to the back end development helps then? Is that what you mean when you say follow up language? Yeah, so say um I think a good one would say so get ball, for example, um, depending on where you're getting that from. It could be you could return like a JSON or some sort of um some sort of data structure of some sort, like you, be, you, you need to be able to know how to dissect that or parse that into whatever you're, 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 um, you're using. A good application of that would be, um, I think Thomas and I, we're working on a, <laughs> uh, we're working on a sort of like a distribution app for uh, delivery drivers. And that came from Logiscope initially, wasn't it? Their back end, the client's back end was Logiscope. So uh, that was all extract extracted in XML format. Um, and then we kind of think, right, why? <laughs> um, so we were able to change that into JSON, work it in a JSON format, and then uh, spit it out back into XML if we needed to. Um, same thing again with languages. You need to know what's left, what's right, for 100 meters, 200 meters, whatever. So. Anybody else? No? We good? Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, I had allowed for some time for uh, this Oculus Rift, Oculus Rift, or Oculus Quest, it is actually, uh, as I found out this morning, um, which is even better, obviously. But uh, I had allowed some time for this to happen, but uh, they're going to give that away uh, at the very end. So uh, ignore that. And although the majority of people here are from Allsop, we are hiring. <laughs> uh, we're hiring for, uh, some front-end and back-end uh, developers, both in sort of mid-to-senior roles and a junior developer as well, or developers, possibly. So there's a take wee photo, if needs be, of the, of the URL there. Um, yeah. I suppose that everybody else wearing a red shirt will be, uh, will be approachable enough to be able to talk to you about that. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much it.